Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Let us resume uh, our uh, session. You have uh, received the uh, latest version of the uh, agenda or accepted uh, workshops. Uh, we have um, now agreed on uh, 93 uh, workshops, which are uh, uh, listed, uh, which which are listed uh, in in the order as as they as they are um, accepted according to uh, ranking and 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 um, uh, as a result of our uh, decisions, we have uh, the list of 15, uh, which are uh, listed. Uh, Maybe. And uh, uh, could we uh, could we scroll down a little bit list to see uh, all of all of the proposals? Uh, I do not see uh, proposal 48 that was suggested to put on the. Is it? Yeah, it is. Good. So, uh, we have uh, seven, seven remaining slots. We have 15, uh, on, uh, fif 15 uh, proposals uh, which uh, we need to uh, rediscuss because there were some, some doubts. But before we do this, uh, I would like to um, uh, advise to uh, look at the statistics. And... Um, Statistics uh, shows us that we're, we're uh, well on track uh, in respect to uh, propo uh, origin of proposers, uh, 41 from developing country, uh, 60 from developed countries. Uh, in relation to In relation to first-time proposers, uh, still 40, uh, grosso modo 4060 is um, uh, kept. When it comes to uh, sub-themes, uh, I think we have uh, slightly balanced, though, uh, when we look to the critical internet resources and openness that is still uh, maybe not sufficiently represented uh, if we look in comparison with other sub-teams. Uh, and it, when we look to the uh, overall representation of uh, the stakeholders, uh, then, then we see that uh, uh, civil society majority, but what we have managed to do is uh, we have managed to increase uh, share of governments and uh, intergovernmental organizations, and, and we would have more or less equal uh, equal distribution among uh, uh, government and intergovernmental organizations combined, or public sector, uh, private sector, and technical community. So it, I think that we have achieved in, in that respect uh, our goal in uh, bringing more government and intergovernmental uh, participation uh, in uh, the main program. That said, I open the floor for any questions you may have. Michael and then Virat. Real quick question. Uh, when you say that we have seven slots left, does that take into account that many of the sessions that we've approved were approved as flash sessions? Because that, that really is the, the real number of 90-minute slots that we have left. Yes, but there may be a little bit of leeway with the 60-minute sessions. We, it's difficult to get the 60-minute sessions, but the flash sessions have been taken into account. C could the secretary just send this last charts to the members? Uh, they, they should be. It has been sent. So. Yeah, they, they should be in, in your. No, we, no, we haven't received it. That's why. Have you? What time? Is that? Three three oh one. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
or ginger, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, I would like to reiterate that we do have the files in our mailboxes, so if we look around, we may find them. Um, as I look at the list of maybes, I'm struck by the, num the ranking of many of them, and I would like to go back to previous comments from MAG members about the importance of respecting our original and majority views on these rankings. Um, and I, I think some are significantly low ranked. So I, I think we might take that into account as well when we take the overall uh, strategy for this afternoon. Thank you. So thank you very much, Subi. Yes, I, I just wanted to support the fact that we've done rather well on improving balance of things and um, I take Ginger's but I believe that would be the purpose of the exercise. Subi, could you please uh, come closer to the mic? I can help. Otherwise, I'll type out the comments in the chat box. Okay, so Subi is breaking up, so she will type in the comments in the chat. Okay, thank you, uh, Avri. Thank you, uh, Avri speaking. One of the things I wanted to ask about was some of the other distributions. For example, we had not only encouraged the newcomers and developing economies, we had encouraged differing uh, formats. And I know in the original 40, there was a chart and that was there a rechart done on formats? I wasn't, I didn't see that yet. And, and, and just wondering how that one's doing. And so I was wondering, as we move forward, do we want to pay attention to some of the other distributions on this next pass? Thanks. If you look at the Excel sheet, um, yeah, you'll find the stats there. So any, any other, other comments? So what I would like, uh, what I would like to propose, um, I, th I think that uh, the uh, MAG members were suggesting uh, those uh, specific workshops uh, for the reason they they felt that they correspond to uh, the criteria of balancing, bringing new new things on uh, out, and and then so on. So there, therefore. Um, it is it is uh, up to us to decide whether we continue with with this maybe list and going through and taking uh, uh, proposals out of this uh, uh, list, or we decide otherwise. Though my, my experience show if, uh, shows if we uh, start uh, define procedures in the group of uh, 50, it may take it may take about uh, uh, 55 hours. Uh, and we have only uh, one hour and maybe ha uh, half uh, to conclude this part of the exercise. So, uh, th therefore, I would I would I would suggest that we take uh, uh, remaining uh, 15 proposals and and still look at those bal balancing uh, things one one time proposals and go through and and we need not to. Uh, select seven. Uh, we may decide to select only four. And then uh, we would take in others uh, based on, on the, the uh, scoring uh, of the mag. But I still would, would suggest uh, to go through quickly uh, those uh, 15 and see whether uh, we can agree on, on uh, which should be taken in. Uh, Marilyn and then Michael. Thank you, Chair. I was going to suggest that we maybe prioritize those where we have uh, proposed mergers, since that uh, conceivably will take two off, resulting in only one, and see if we can reach a uh, reach conclusion on that quickly. And then I, um, again, I guess I wanted to just ask the Secretariat a question. I'm sorry I wasn't able to look at the statistics. I still am, un uh, so I, I need a clarification. Are we equating sustainable development as a theme with internet economy because 
if not, and I, they're not quite the same thing, they have a relationship, then I would like to look at these uh, with an eye to any that advance uh, and support our overall theme of sustainable development. For instance, 231, which was, I think Mark suggested, uh, the proposers could take a particular focus on sustainable development, because I think that's a bit of a gap for us. We chose it as a theme. It's a really important year to be showing they're doing something on sustainable development. Uh, thank you, Michael. Mm -hmm. Thank you for uh, doing an excellent job of outlining what our goals are here and the different things we're trying to include. But I, I didn't hear you mention that we're also trying to bring some new ideas in here. I mean, that's for me, that's very important. I think for a number of us, that's um, the reason we're spending so much time on this exercise. No, emerging issues is one of the, one of the uh, sub themes. Of, of, of our exercise, and, and indeed we need to bring uh, new themes for sure. But, but not just emerging issues. There are new themes within some of the existing, uh, the other themes that are well represented. So I would argue that, you know, it's, it's in some but cases we might, we might be adding a new idea that is, is so novel that it might not be, uh, uh, it's more important to get that new idea than to somehow get more balance between the sub-themes. Indeed, Michael. We're, we're uh, both converted and we're arguing about the same thing. These are new things, they're emerging issues, and uh, whether they belong to other sub-theme, if they are new, they are new and emerging. Uh, Virat? So I, I just wanted to make sure that um, there's a lesson here for next time, and it's important that we record this, that if we're going to reward new ideas um, uh, as a uh, as, as, as workshops that can be pulled up from 228 and two, you know, 151, then we must put that out as the criteria at the beginning because it is unfair on proposed people who set in proposals following guidelines, sending out their points under emerging issues, and then learn that those who didn't meet the criteria are being rewarded in this discussion. I, I request that we take into consideration this, and next time, if new ideas is important, and I respect that, then we must say that so that the publicly known transparent process allows people to provide inputs and proposals under that category, just as uh, this, this year we have serious rewards for new formats. So shall we, shall we go one by one now? Uh, let me, let me uh, put then up uh, proposal 70. Uh, as, as you see, these uh, maybes are uh, sort of uh, uh, listed uh, in u using the overall ranking as, as well, that we can we can see uh, which have been listed uh, the highest. So um, uh, all all of them we had already discussed, and uh, there there were uh, not really good uh, feeling in the room uh, whether they would merit or not be. Uh, included uh, taking into account the balancing uh, criteria. And uh, I see Avri is seeking the floor. Please, Avri. Thank you. Avri Doria speaking. Yeah, I wanted to speak out in, in favor of this one. Uh, did a little bit more uh, looking into it uh, after seeing it uh, last night. Had, had, I believe, graded it well. Wanted to point out that it does, you know, it is, it is a newcomer. Uh, it is an emerging issue, both of which are lower than they could be. 
Uh, it's a different format. The, the hypothetical format that, that's being done is, is, is different, and it is, it's, it's an idea that, that is sort of a new, it is, it, not only is it an emerging topic, but it is a different way of looking at a very serious issue. Now, it, it has a minus in that it is civil society again. Uh, and one of the other minuses that came up is that the, the geodiversity of it wasn't good enough, and especially within this hypothetical format that they're taking of basically talking about that issue from various perspectives, it, it, it did seem a little shy there. Had a conversation with the, with the organizer of it and basically, you know, got a, 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 a gigantic willingness to, to to, to gather both government and more geodiversity, and basically got the impression that they were sort of waiting to, to find out where they were. And, and I will also point out that it was in that first group of 10 that, you know, uh, it, was, it was our first maybe, it was in that group of 10 that was very close to being automatic. So I'd really like to ask people to, to reconsider this one because of those, Features. Thank you. So thank you very much. Uh, any further comments? Uh, I, I, I was. I had the impression that another uh, uh, workshop on maybe list was also geared towards uh, the managing digital legacies. Uh, I, th I, th I think, uh, but now now I cannot find it very quickly. Uh, Michael? When we first discussed this, there was some discussion about uh, somehow merging this with the right to be forgotten panel, but those are very distinct concepts and the people involved are quite distinct. One reason I'm quite excited about this proposal is because it actually is one of just a couple things that were proposed as a direct result of an IGF meeting at the regional level. This was a, this was based on a panel that the Australians did at the Australian IGF very successfully. Um, so far, I don't think we've accepted either of the two proposals that were proposed by IGFs directly. And so uh, this is a, would be a nice statement that we value the input of the regional and national IGFs. Yeah, now I, now I, I, I found it. Uh, that is, I, I was uh, thinking about uh, uh, workshop number 33, Mandatory Data Retention Human Rights. Now, th this is really based, this is a question of after I die, who gets to log into my Facebook account, who gets to see my email, that's very different than the data retention laws related to law enforcement. So I, I, again, uh, I, I thought this was unique among the, the, the sessions and a topic that's only been discussed in the U.S. for maybe the last five months, so it's, it's brand new. Uh, Fiona? Yes, thank you, Yanis. Um, I would just suggest that based on a principled matter, because both the first two workshops on this chart, uh, number 70 and number 35, both actually on merit scored within the 100, that we would accept those two. The first one scored 75, and the second one was merit-based rank 90. And I think if we're going back to that principled merit-based thing, I think just letting those two through would make sense, so we can move on. So thank you for helping me out. Uh, Subi? Uh, Subi said that uh, for the reasons mentioned, she doesn't support inclusion of this proposal. It does add to the thematic stakeholder balance, and we already have enough workshops on the topic. Okay, thank you. But uh, now, if, if we follow what uh, Fiona said, uh, may maybe that could help us. Uh, accelerate these things. Uh, they, they would be, uh, these two, uh, number se 70 and 35, would be in based on merits. That's in top 100. And um, since we, we uh, did majority of balancing already, uh, if we would accept proposal of Fiona, can we? Uh, I see nodding, and Ginger was uh, also in agreement. G 
Ginger said uh, yes from me on 1735, and before that she said I agree with Michael Nelson. This is an important issue to include, even if the organizers need, need mentoring. Also support Fiona's recommendation on those two. So then, then we have agreement of Meg, and uh, we uh, go uh, straight to uh, to uh, 63. Sorry, uh, sorry, I'm looking to the wrong wrong uh, screen. I would I would I need to look to the to the next uh, ranking. It is two two thirty one. Anyone would like to? Uh, launch discussion about 231. Uh, sorry, because I, I think that I have in my computer a different. Did we already discuss the, the one above those? No, no. I, I see 70, then 35, then 263, yes, then 56, then 33, simply, simply, and 231. Simply we're work, working, uh, uh, I asked Secretariat to uh, rank those uh, according to initial ranking. Ah, okay. So that, that is why uh, I was looking exactly to the same screen that you are looking, and that's why I was, I was wrong. Okay, uh, a very quick uh, fix to that is that if you see the tab by the rank, right on top by the rank, you just click that, and then it says sort from um, largest to smallest, and then they'll be in the right order. So that was lesson in computer literacy. Thank you, Chingita. <laughs> Marilyn. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I just want to preface my comments by uh, saying something that I feel, um, I don't want to debate it, but I do just want to express this. I think we have to be a little bit careful about um, assuming that uh, there's some kind of uh, meritorious judgment in the ratings that we did. We're all different, and we did the best we could. But um, really, this is a, um, an exercise in being human in how we got these ratings assigned. And I think we should all recognize that. So I appreciate the opportunity to talk about 231, which was uh, ranked 111. Um, as I said before, uh, and I, I know Mark made a comment about this. I'd like to come back to that. Um, one of the main uh, things I think this can contribute is that it brings in a regional um, perspective that is not otherwise uh, actively participating, um, and that is business from the MENA region, business from small SMEs from other regions as well as it's described through those industry associations. Uh, it is business focused, so I would say there is definitely um, a gap in the fact that it uh, focused on SMEs across the regions. It does not include government and it doesn't include, um, in, although in some of the countries the uh, associations are NGOs. They are required legally to be NGOs, but by no means would they be called civil society. Um, Mark's suggestion that the focus be on sustainable development I think is an excellent suggestion, uh, and particularly if we were to ask them to focus on the sustainable development and digital economy aspects um, that are uh, uh, of concern and are related to internet governance. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Yes, thanks. I will re repeat that uh, point. I just um, note uh, the, um, the it would enhance the uh, percentage of uh, private sector orientated um, proposals. Currently, it's ten percent, isn't it? So, uh, of all the proposals, and then second, secondly, uh, there were no low, low scores. There were uh, they, they were all threes, fours, or fives. So, I think there was a. Uh, 
a general consensus amongst the MAG members who were scoring and uh, commenting that uh, this was sort of above the borderline mark. See what I mean? So I would support it. Thank you. So thank you. May I take that, that we would add this one as well? I see no objections. Now we go to uh, 212. Uh, I think there are other proposals and maybe even uh, someone that has been already accepted by us. This brings a different perspective to, to the engagement of youth. Uh, this uh, will discuss uh, the uh, questions related to youth uh, from the point of view of the principles of internet governance, taking into account different principles that have been defined and analyzing those uh, principles uh, from the point of view of youth. And this will also discuss the youth manifesto that has been uh, proposed by civil society in Europe with funding from the European community. This is a multi-stakeholder approach with people from different uh, uh, continents that will take part, part of this. So I think it's uh, uh, meritorious. So, any comments? Marilyn? Yes, Chair. Um, I, I, I'd like to um, maybe take stock of how many youth sessions we have and, and the kind of diversity that's represented as we look across the board. If um, I think I rated this one as um, not as highly as some others uh, because I did feel that it was um, it, it was it was sort of a I saw it almost as a uh, meeting of a like-minded group working together as opposed to being a um, um, debate or uh, bringing in you know it sort of felt like it's a project that is evolving to the next step it does engage youth and so for that reason I was interested in considering it but I did have some concerns about how it fit into the landscape of all of the workshops that included youth. Uh, Just to point out that uh, despite uh, the number of workshops of that focus on youth being very many proposed, we have two that fit into the catch criteria. Just wanted to point out, you asked about the statistics, so two have been accepted despite uh, all those very many proposals. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Just to, I guess, um, bring back the same observation that I mentioned earlier, which is workshop 191. It's uh, very, very similar in terms of thematic content as well as speakers and ranked very highly and has been accepted. It's top 10 in the current accepted list. So again raising the question on the added value and what difference this will bring or make um, whilst of course really very much supporting youth participation into the IGF. Uh, Thank you Chairman. Uh, from day one I was proposing that the youth uh, topic should be a main session but having said that uh, I think we already have two workshops, and one of those is very similar to this one. And so that's why I'm reluctant that to, if we have a spot to spare, maybe I will uh, suggest this, but the spots for workshops are really scarce now. So I, I'm not convinced that it's the best to, to have three similar workshops. I repeat, I, I would rather have a, a main session, 90-minute main session of, of you, so we could have the, the plenary hall uh, uh, for that. Uh, having said that, I will 
if we want to keep this workshop, I would suggest to merge it with one of the other two selected, but don't, don't take one spot of workshops that are very scarce for, for this. So thank you. It seems that skepticism remains. There is a proposal to uh, suggest uh, that uh, organizers talk to 191 workshop organizers and see possibility of mergers, uh, merger of, of, the, of those, and we would maintain it on maybe list uh, uh, for the moment. Uh, Ginger, please. Sorry to put a bump into the road here, but I think that all that two were saying two, there's already two. I honestly don't believe that two out of a hundred represents the youth and the fact that we want to bring in new voices and new concepts and new young people into the process. So even if they need mentoring to emphasize the difference between the different sessions, I think it's important that we have th at least three with youth, um, unless we have a guarantee that there's going to be a main session. In this case, I, I think the numbers speak. I, I don't think two is enough. And um, I would strongly ask that we take that into account. Thank you. Uh, last, last time uh, we invited the uh, young uh, lady to speak at the closing. I, I uh, will ask Secretariat to identify a young person to speak at the opening and at the closing. So in that, in that respect, we will uh, try to uh, put prominence on the young participants. Ephraim, please. Okay, just to add to that, I agree with you on that. And then just to emphasize, if it's possible that the Secretariat and the MAG can insist that uh, as you send out the accepted proposals that uh, the, pro the workshop proposals to reach out to young people that would be good because according uh, we've, uh, we've had this discussion in the mailing list and there's a publicly available document where young people have been putting up their profile and if workshop proposals can go through that pro that list and see which among them they can reach out and other young people are free to continue reaching out to a dynamic coalition and to put their names onto that list thank you so thank you. Not, noted, and that that should be uh, put in every uh, every recommendation that we that we issue. Uh, Subi, um, just a short note from Subi. She said that uh, she appreciates the chair's statement. Uh, she doesn't see new voices here. It's more an amplification of similar voices. So I support a main session on youth instead. So thank you. Let us move to the next one. We maintain uh, 2.12 on maybe list, and we go to uh, 2.13. Michael? Uh, again, this is a, a very practical, very immediate concern to a number of companies that are in the internet infrastructure business. Uh, it's also an immediate concern for a lot of the civil society groups that are trying to understand just how extensive surveillance is. Um, this is about transparency of what's really going on inside the internet, what kind of law enforcement requests there are for data, who's monitoring what where. And we just do not have another session that's like this. Um, we have not looked at this issue in the past, and um, I, I strongly urge that we consider it. I, I, um, and, and again, it's, it, while it doesn't have a lot of private sector people involved as yet, I'm sure they will be involved. So thank you. Reaction? Virat? Actually, this is one of my favorite sessions, but this session only makes sense if those who order surveillance are on the table. Uh, the difficulty with holding these sessions is that um, most people don't realize that companies that are required to respond to questions asked by civil society are forbidden to respond or give information under law. 
and this session is then then becomes a shooting at the darts at a at a at a signboard. So if you can get not just government officials but intelligence agencies to come and inform or or at least Interpol to say what is it that they want, why do they have this, what are the processes, then I think it will be meaningful. Otherwise it will be the same old with at the two main parties, one which is bound by law to be mum and the other who orders surveillance unavailable. If they are not in the room, let's not have one more of these sessions. Michael? Strongly agree with that. I mean, obviously, you want the, the full spectrum of speakers there, and I think that would be the desire of the organizers, too. Um, but I, we have not had this particular session on this issue of transparency reports, and um, I think that's why this would be new and different. Uh, I do know there will be some people from law enforcement coming to this meeting, so I'll, if you need, I'll volunteer. Maybe Virat, the two of us can volunteer to reach out to the organizers and give them some suggestions on either current law enforcement and intelligence community members, or probably better, former members of that com those communities who could talk a little bit about the context and how they see the world from their side. Thanks for making that point, Virat. It's one I should have made. Uh, uh, okay. uh, the experience has been, uh, Mike, thanks for these comments. The experience has been from the national and regional IGF process when, uh, for, for, for workshops like this when we've tried to engage and involve stakeholders from the law enforcement community and other agencies they will not show up. So it's not being due to lack of efforts, but I think there is, uh, there is a roadblock of those communities to engage in these conversations in a very public way. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are really talking of a structural problem here, and minus that, it will be challenging to pull this off in a, in a manner that it is meaningful. So Thank, thank you, Marilyn. I just uh, I want to concur with the statements that have been made and remind folks that in the past, when we've tried to do this and we did try to do it in Charm and we tried to do it um, again in Lithuania, we were able to get um, um, the UN organization dealing with organized crime. We were able to get a speaker from um, the UK SOAC. We were able to get uh, MOG, et cetera, but we've never actually been able to get, uh, and we even got a jurist, a senior jurist from uh, Egypt, but we've never been able to get the um, folks um, freed up by their government <laughs> to be able to accept this kind of uh, invitation. So then judging what you said just, Marilyn, this is not a new uh, kind of issue. This has been discussed on a number of occasions. That contradicts a little bit what Let me, let me, let me, we've said. tried to discuss it and we've taken various approaches at discussing it. And I would just say, Michael, there have been um, um, situations where um, publications of reports about the number of uh, requests have been shared, but we've never been able to um, bring forward the the balance that uh, Anki and Virat were suggesting that you ne we need to have the uh, rest of the uh, rest of the participants we've never been able to deliver that not for lack of asking Michael uh, again I'm, I'm making a distinction between panels on the issue of surveillance and law enforcement which certainly we've had sessions on that and this particular topic, which is how do we talk about the collection processes, how do we publish transparency reports, th this, is, this is a narrower focus. It's one that I think law enforcement or former law enforcement people could engage on. We might also be creative and reach out to parliamentarians. I did notice that on a couple other proposals that dealt with law enforcement issues, there were law enforcement people from Brazil who were willing to make the trip for other panels. So it may be that going to the local, the countries nearby might be another approach. But I, I, it's hard for me to, 
clearly they didn't offer up names of people, probably because they weren't going to approach government officials until they knew they had permission to organize something. Uh, why don't we give them a try, and tell them our concerns, and you know, see how it goes. Um, there, are, there, are, there are also authors, people who might be able to speak on the need for surveillance. I can think of five of them quite quickly, um, and they might enjoy a few days in the beach. Honestly, I don't, I don't, I don't feel the, the the room. Of course, I can I can say let's go for it, but we we still have uh, another ten and and uh, uh, then four slots remaining. Virat, if there is a provision under which the secretary can reach out and we have the time to park a slot, and if they come back with names, then actually it could be a very valuable session. But if that's not the case, then we have to just move on. But I'm perfectly willing to go with that that option if that option exists and it's practically doable. So shall we then uh, agree that we would we would um, uh, put put this uh, uh, workshop proposal aside, pending verification by Secretariat uh, based on transcript, uh, all the conditions that we discussed here, and if they, they are met then, uh, a 60 minute session would be allocated. Can we agree on that? But we would not count this one in, in those hundred, at least for the moment. Agreed. So we are in agreement. Oh, yes, she's in agreement. Uh, she just had a, a note on one other thing. She, she asked, once the supporter has introduced a session, can we get a clarification on how many interventions in each of us is allowed to go on supporting the same proposal? I ask this in the interest of time. So thank you, Subi, for uh, helping me uh, running this conversation. That's a very pertinent question. I was hesitant all the time to ask it and remind. Thank you. So we have agreement uh, that we, on this particular topic, Secretariat will reach out, will uh, ask uh, organizers whether those comments which were made uh, could be met, and if there will be promise, then six minute time would be allocated. If there won't be promise, then uh, it would not be uh, allocated uh, as a result of our conversation. Uh, 201. Um, Flavio, please. It's just to remember arguments that have already been done uh, before. Uh, although we have already uh, proved another uh, workshop on IXPs, this brings a much broader perspective uh, from also economic side uh, with participants from all multi-stakeholder groups, from private sector that are involved in running IXPs, uh, with civil society organizations that are also running, uh, governments, uh, and so on, so from different continents. So uh, it's, uh, the other one is much more focused on technical side, uh, if we see the list of participants. So I think that... Uh, so thank you. Uh, Juan Afonso. Yeah, Chairman, I don't want to take more, more, much time here. This is the workshop that I would like my senior officials in my ministry to attend. So that said it all. The other that we have in IXP is more implementation. And this is more to the reason for including this in policies. So I think it really uh, it's interesting. So thank, thank you, uh, uh I support inclusion of uh, of this, and as I said, um, it is a it is a unique aspect of looking at the things. It's not technical; it's related to sustainability. So thank you very much. Uh, so I, I hear no no opposition. Shall we include? Yes. Decided. Next one. One twenty.
So uh, present a launch of publication. It's requested 90, 90 minutes. We had we had a conversation before that that might be uh, either uh, shortened uh, or uh, we should ask UNESCO to do it during open forum. Mark. Well, um, I, I don't see the case for um, uh, confirming this, really. Um, UNESCO, IGOs have a good share of the um, uh, proposals, so I don't think that was that's an argument purely on grounds of uh, UNESCO uh, being an IGO given an extra slot. I don't I don't see it, um, and in view of the purpose, um, a different different format is um, the option here. I think. Thank you. Another one. Um, I would support a different format as well, uh, either a flash session or um, asking a, a flash session. I think also, uh, I'm just going to repeat a comment I made earlier I, on the commentators that are proposed, um, so on the co-organizers co and, the, and the commentators, I see a lot of the same names. Um, from the private sector and from um, uh, civil society. So if it's, a, if it's a launch of a publication, it could be a flash session for 30 minutes or it could be incorporated into the open forum. So shall, shall we offer a flash session, 30 minutes, for the launch? And that would, would not count in the, uh, in the overall 100. Agreed. So be your in agreement. Um, she said that uh, she doesn't support this one. Uh, uh, it should be either during open forum or uh, on a booth. Uh, we have a lot of uh, slots accessible now for IGOs. So can we all uh, live with offering flash session and do not count it in the? Uh, in the uh, uh, overall 100. Yes, agreed. UNESCO, happy. Thank you. You know, I have still very wrong feelings about it. I admit that. <laughs> you feel it. 228. Two twenty-eight. Uh, we we had a conversation. There is a proposal also to merge it. Uh, a proposed merger with the uh, two hundred eight, which is also on this list. And also link it, link it with the with the um, uh, dynamic coalition, uh, Maryland. Chair, yeah, perhaps I'm one of the people Subi was referencing. I don't need to repeat everything I said before, but I stand able to say it if I need to. I support the decision we made. Let's try to merge 208 and 228 and link them to the Dynamic Coalition. Juan Aposa. Yes, thank you. From day one, I not only defended youth as a main session, I also defended women and gender. Well, maybe I defend young women, but <laughs> and in any case, uh, I think that we should consider even the possibility of having a men's session on gender. And I also want to point out to the Secretariat that besides 208, there are also five more workshop proposals uh, related with the theme that maybe the, some of the conveners could be asked uh, to join in that merger. These are workshop 20, 59, 107, 144, and 196. Having said that, I support Marilyn's uh, suggestion for a merger with 208. Thank you. So thank you. Any opposition? Jack? 
not in opposition, but um, to support the merger as well and for it to go through as proposed, linking with, uh, with the dynamic commission work where possible. Um, but just to also clarify that even though it is looking at gender and women's rights issues, it's not quite the same topic or the same content and to make a distinction between that. Um, this is in response to one of Alfonso's comment. So thank you very much. Then we, we uh, propose, uh, we retain this and propose merger with the uh, 208 and uh, link with the dynamic coalition activity. Decided. Yeah, yeah Chair, it, I just have to ask a favor. I, I think uh, the MAG needs to um, give instruction, right, that this is a merger uh, so that both parties understand it's a merger and this is a, this is a private sector joke. We normally say there's no such things as mergers, there's only acquisitions. So uh, I think the guidance from the MAG secretariat needs to be merging means both of you have to uh, adapt so that you are going to have a new uh, formulation. And if there is no, uh, no merger, then there is no session. So the conditionality. That, that is what is called uh, MAG is making hostile takeover. Uh, 2.16. Uh, Janis, just to note that Subi supports the merger as well. Thank you, Subi. 2.16. Maybe before we are uh, talking about this, uh, this particular uh, proposal, which uh, we also uh, felt would be useful to merge with uh, 156, this is just a recollection from the previous uh, uh, session, I would like to, to take up, uh, to jump a little bit uh, to another topic, and that is a discussion about main session, because the uh, decision on the main session uh, themes may influence our our uh, discussion about this uh, uh, particular uh, workshop proposal 216. Mm -hmm. Rather 30 seconds of recreation. Back to the job, please. Mm -hmm. Or to jobs. Oh, Mike, uh, Peter Dengel Trust says bye. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's get serious. Uh, 2.16. Who is willing to make a point? Subi. Um, the Subi uh, uh, wants to make a general point regarding to the previous, uh, one of the previous comments. Uh, she said, we don't need to be picky, but it, it is important that utmost sensitivity be exercised. Um, thanks for the support, but women don't need defending, but we all know that you mean well. Since this is a formal meeting with transcript being made public, we do look at fellow traveler and not defenders and champions. So thank you. Still 2000, uh, 216. Uh, Susan? Um, yes, I, I would just like to say that I think that if we do end up having um, a session on network neutrality and when we get to that, a main session and when we do get to that um, discussion. Um, I think that uh, this this proposal could be included within that or um, perhaps we could fold in the proposers into that main session. That's all I'd like to say. Th thank you. Uh, Juan Alfonso. Yes, Chairman, I was the one who proposed this in workshop in this round. And I think it's, well, it's important, that's why I propose. But I am saving the defense for the next one, that I think is more important. So uh, this is a negotiation. We'll put this in square brackets and move to the, to the next one, please. So if proponents suggest that, we cannot uh, ignore it. Uh, we uh, retain it on maybe list still. And uh, we're moving then to... Uh, 
private sector proposal, new proposal, and Juan Alfonso is uh, holding his ammunition for this. But Fiona first. Yes, thank you very much, Janice. Um, I just want to bring to the attention to fellow MAG colleagues that it's 4 o'clock and we have two hours left, or just after 4. We have yet to discuss the dynamic coalitions and we haven't discussed the main sessions, and I think it's going to be important that we actually come to agreement, at least preliminarily, on the main session topics before we leave Geneva. So I would suggest we perhaps give another few minutes to this and then call time, and then if there's still no agreement, the remaining slots just go to the ones that, you know, scored the highest on the initial thing and we move on. Um, I do have some observations to share on this entire process, but perhaps I'll wait and do that once we're done or maybe on the email list. So thank you. Uh, again, uh, it's not, not that much. We, we still have five, five proposals to examine. And, uh, and then certainly uh, if there will be still slots, they will go to the highest score. Uh, but since we have started this process, we need to continue. It would be unfair, uh, simply. We may uh, shorten up discussion and be more swift. Uh, Juan Alfonso. Yes, uh, recently we talked about this uh, workshop proposal. Uh, what I propose now is to retain it and please, and the secretary, to include governments from the region to be uh, participants in the in in the panel, I, I think that we could uh, convince very easily that government that has experience in this, like maybe Colombia, Brazil is it's also listed here. Even the, the very humble experience of Cuba that we, we are only beginning, but we could be there as well. So, I, but I think that the whole topic it's it's very relevant in our continent and not only our continent because this is relevant the link between this technology and development and the way of how to really measure that link i, I will reiterate that raul katz is the world leader in in this uh, thing and I, I urge you to consult his writings we recently had in cstd one of his latest uh, things and i think that this is very, really, really I important. Uh, I know that all workshop proposals have merit, but I think it has a special merit. It could be uh, even, as I told before, improved with some pr uh, uh, panelists from uh, uh, Latin American uh, governments. Thank you. Uh, Jack, your flag is up. Opposition for inclusion. Private sector, one time uh, first proposal, new proposal. No opposition decided. One twenty eight. Twenty-eight. No appetite to MAG member of MAG members. UNESCO. I just provide some updates during lunch break. I. Uh, we received a request uh, from the workshop number 42, uh, which talks about uh, the online hate speech and its relation with human rights, such as uh, free expression privacy, from also the law and the jurisdiction aspect, uh, which fits our, ours. And also spoke with uh, the intersection facilitator on the, on the online abuse, which uh, we also have a shared interest on, on, on the gender, women and girls aspect. Uh, and after all, we also want to focus this uh, workshop on the use and the use radicalization as we have taken from our June conference. So we, in this way, I wish we can fit this theme better and better, also better frame this uh, huge topic in IGF uh, to make a more specific uh, focus. Thank you, Marilyn. Actually, the, the question I was going to ask um, is 
how does this relate to those two other workshops? Um, Hate speech, and um, and then the uh, the dynamic coalition on uh, on online abuse. Uh, do we see it as a sort of a, a series which have relationship to each other, but have different facets and different audiences, or do we see it as a continuum? If I could better understand that, that would help me understand how it how it fits. It, this seems to me to be focused on. Um, um, something that is undoubtedly of interest to governments and to citizens, and that is what I might call the uh, abusive use of the medium. Maybe not everybody thinks it's abusive use of the medium, but it is a, I think it is a uh, high profile uh, topic in many capitals today. Jack? I think what's specific about this proposal that's interesting that was also defended earlier is that it's it's, foca it's focusing on youth radicalization, which is not a topic that was covered in proposal workshop 151. But otherwise, um, what I would recommend is for this proposal, uh, this workshop proposal, to then make sure that they are recommending speakers from this workshop into workshop 151, which has already been accepted and has quite a broad and strong um, thematic hold, and in terms of where the interlinkages are, I would, I would um, hope that there will be enough outreach to all of the different workshop organizers that may have interlinkages to input into the best practice forum process, for example, which is what uh, we started doing. Thank you, Giacomo. Yes, I think that <coughs> this topic is uh, very important um, and I strongly support it, um, especially because um, in some region of the world, and I would suggest to the organizer to take into account uh, specific regional cases, this is really a very hot issue. Virat? Uh, it's been rightly said, this is becoming a, a very difficult issue for governments, especially uh, in view of some of the developments in related to ISIS. Um, governments are paying a lot of attention to this issue. Um, there is, though, a requirement to include some of the other uh, government officials or law enforcement agencies or intelligence agencies again. In this case, may not be intelligence, but law enforcement agencies from the countries that are susceptible to such uh, um, radicalization. It's current, it's happening, it's right on top. And by the way, uh, since we last spoke, um, IGO um, is not exceeding its, its numbers. They're less than what they were. So I think if you get another one for intergovernmental inter organizations, that will be a good idea. Uh, it will help the balance that we originally set ourselves up. Thank you. So, Subi, last one. Uh, Subi so said that uh, she strongly supports it. This is an extremely important issue, and we need more diversity of regional perspectives. So, then I, I, I would propose that based on um, also balancing and increasing intergovernmental participation, uh, we retain this. Uh, but specifically ask to uh, organizers to uh, focus on on youth radicalization uh, as as a as an issue that uh, is important for governments thank you if that is decision yes thank you now we three to go 56 56. No one is asking for the floor. Doubts remain. Mark? Thanks, yes, well, um I'm sorry if it's repeating what I uh, said earlier about this, but I thought this does bring 
uh, focus on an issue that's not covered elsewhere, um, mobile banking and um, barriers to that and challenges and security and so on. So I see it having value as a, a session at this year's IGF. Uh, so I, I would support it uh, and I, I thought it was a very good proposal. Um, but uh, to extend participation to sub-Saharan uh, Africa. Thank you. President Dong. Yes, I have a second comment. Uh, this uh, topic uh, is not covered by the current selected workshop uh, proposals. So I, I su suggest to and this uh, proposal into the agenda. Thank you, thank you, Hassan. Yes, I uh, thank you, Chair. I second Mark on the same comment. Yes, uh, I, su I support this proposal. Thank you. So, shall we retain then? But we need we need also most probably uh, coach the organizers and, and make sure that uh, the um, intent. <laughs> that MAG members uh, expressed here is uh, achieved as a result of the workshop. On this one, Virat? On next one, on this one. Shimon, this, uh, th th this proposal, you know, the real challenge with regards to mobile payments in vast majority of the world is with regards to banking rules and central banking. Uh, GSMA will tell you more than anybody else how difficult it is to get past because the moment you get into mobile banking, then you have to start uh, agreeing to all the banking rules, which makes it virtually impossible for companies to sort of operate this. So uh, when I see the speakers, n none of them. Uh, so this is not a discussion to be had. You know, this discussion has to be had with people who have to enable this easily. Uh, mobile banking sort of Pay, mobile payments is a very wafer thin margins. It doesn't work. Operators don't love this. But the only way it can happen is if the regulatory environment is right. And this is not the the, the speakers and the environment. This is not the place for that discussion. This discussion has to happen with banks and central bankers. So I just want to submit that you can have an academic discussion, but the the the, the challenge and the audience is very different from those who will be at IGF. As, as somebody who deals with it practically on a daily basis. Can, can we then, then uh, put it conditional and taking into account what you just said and ask uh, uh, Dominique uh, get in touch and making sure that this aspect that you raised is uh, factored in and we need to get somebody who can speak on this, this very subject. And if that condition is not met, uh, we disqualify, uh, we take, take it off the program. Can we, can we do conditionality? Good. Yanis, uh, so we also uh, 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 propose that uh, uh, we uh, uh, put a requirement to uh, um, widen the perspective and speaker diversity, especially to invite more government participation. So uh, thank you. Uh, th this this uh, uh, proposal is um, conditioned with the a uh, change in participation and bringing this uh, uh, regulatory aspect in. Otherwise, and that, that will be Dominique and Secretariat will remind Dominique that this should be done. Thank you. Next one, uh, two to go, 33. We had, had doubts about this because of um, uh, uh, expose both on both on the team and yes, on the yes, stakeholder. That's why we did not put it in. Shall we keep it on? Maybe. No one is opposing. We are keeping it on maybe list. The last one, 48. Who was putting it? This is a new one. 
we put it on the maybe list at the very end. Mark, I think you were proposing that, if I recall correctly. Thank you, Chair. I didn't actually comment on the, on the substance earlier, but um, I thought this um, proposal has, uh, has value um, in terms of its um, horizon scanning and uh, uh, sort of identifying emerging issues and, and so on. So I, I would, it's coming from the um, Dutch IGF, yeah, this one. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, 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 I would support its inclusion. Um, because of its, its covering really, it's, it's m one of the more forward-looking um, substantive uh, agendas and uh, the IGF needs more of those. And, uh, so I would argue in, on that basis, it's, it's horizon scanning looking ahead um, and, and uh, provides value, additional value in that, for that reason. Thank you. And if we would retain that would be mostly on merits that this is emerging issue and, and some something which is maybe not well understood. Sita, please. Thank you, Chair. This is Sita. I would support this proposal because it's a continuation of the national IDF as what we already did in for Australia. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Subi. So we said that uh, this is a fantastic team and a great content. Uh, she strongly supports it. It brings government participation and it is a new issue. Uh, we'll need to enhance uh, speaker diversity. Zhendong, your is up? No. Based what we heard, any opposition of retaining 40, 48 on the merits that this is a new uh, upcoming emerging not well understood as a result, badly scored. It is so decided. Thank you very much. We have now a list of about a uh, hundred. Uh, maybe, maybe not, but I what I would like to suggest now, uh, we uh, agreed that Secretariat would have uh, discretion uh, of uh, a few uh, workshops. Uh, otherwise, uh, now when uh, Secretariat will put uh, all the accepted workshops in the, um, uh, in the in relevant boxes, we may discover that one or two uh, slots are free or available. Then uh, Secretariat would take uh, workshops from the highest uh, scored in case that that would be that would happen and and uh, this exercise should be done fairly soon uh, that uh, we inform uh, potential uh, workshop proponents very quickly otherwise we would inform those immediately those which uh, proposals were retained Virat, please i agree completely with the proposal chairman so thank you very much i think that that concludes uh, the selection uh, process uh, for the moment, we will be uh, informed by Secretariat on a regular basis uh, on, on the progress uh, in contacting uh, workshop proponents, organizers now. Uh, we had some conditionalities. We will be hearing reports on those. And uh, we uh, now can proceed to uh, remaining agenda items. Uh, that we uh, need to examine. And those are um, dynamic coalitions, interregional dialogue, main sessions, way forward. Shall we take it in, in that order? I suspect that main sessions may, may take longer time. And uh, if we can get through uh, quickly, uh, dynamic coalitions. Marcus, would you like to introduce the topic? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Yes, uh, I will refer back to what I said when we started this meeting and also what I said at the December meeting, recalling the history of dynamic coalition and the raison d'etre for going ahead with them um, when we started the IGF. It was then a way uh, to a compromise between those who wanted to create a very elaborate structure with working groups for intercessional work and 
those who didn't want any of that. So we said, let dynamic coalitions emerge, let people who share the same interest work together. Uh, we discussed on several occasions how to deal with them as we moved along. Some of the dynamic coalitions fizzled out, some others produced useful work, um, but on the whole they remained on the fringes of the IGF. And what we discovered, uh, well we also saw that those who fizzled out uh, some of them were actually mainly created to have a slot in the annual meeting. Some of them didn't produce reports, so we tightened gradually a little bit the criteria, make sure that they produced the report before they were given a slot again at the annual meeting. But uh, as I said, uh, some of them actually produced reports. Now the downside with that is that these this work that was produced on the fringes of the IGF never found its way back to the main session, to the main community, be that for approval or be that for rejection. And we have uh, some of them that produced fairly elaborate booklets, like the Dynamic Coalition on Rights and Principles, but this booklet, this publication, as I said, never went back to the main uh, IGF, the mainstream community. Now, I'm not sure whether they would actually, it's a fairly solid, uh, elaborate uh, paper, but the main stream IGF may or may not endorse these principles, but we, don't, we are in a position now that they are kind of independent of the IGF, present themselves as the rights and principles of the Dynamic Coalition of Rights and Principles, which has hardly any link left, and I think this is somewhat problematic. Uh, on the other hand, we have the Dynamic Coalition, I think Andrea is sitting behind me on the accessibility for people with disabilities. They did have a main session, they organized the main session in Sharm El Sheikh where they actually presented their work to the broader community and I had hoped then that the main session would actually endorse their, these guidelines but for one or the other reason the chairman of the session then forgot to ask the question do we all agree with that and I'm sure at the time the main hall would have approved with acclamation these guidelines. So here we are and the proposal is we had calls with the dynamic coalitions and they all agree to be better integrated that we actually prepare a slot at the uh, in the main session and in the current program it's 90 minute slot, I think this would be perfectly adequate and this slot would not be for discussing in depth the substance of what work they may or may not have produced but just to see whether or not uh, the main uh, uh, mainstream of the community actually agrees with them or finds these uh, outputs as not acceptable. It could be a kind of reality check that also gives the feedback to the dynamic coalitions whether they actually move in the right direction towards a consensus uh, oriented outcome. As I said, I don't think we would have any issue with the dynamic coalition on accessibility. They produced excellent work and they are in the process of updating their guidelines. They have been adopted by the Secretariat and in planning the uh, annual meeting, the Secretariat looks at these guidelines and they are operational. But in this particular case, it would be, I think, uh, beneficial if they were actually labeled the IGF guidelines and that would also allow the IGF to show to the world there is clearly a tangible outcome. Uh, the Dynamic Coalition on Network Neutrality is actually preparing a process to come up with a statement. They had previously prepared a framework that has been transferred into the Council of Europe, but again that was never discussed 
It was always discussed in the, the meetings of the dynamic coalitions, but never in a main setting. Now, network neutrality is by far a more controversial subject, but if we let them go ahead with their plan, and they will go ahead with their plan without bringing them back to the main session, we may have some outcome that will be some kind of outcome of a dynamic coalition, but which will not have the reality check of the main session. So I think this would be beneficial, I think, for the IGF, but also for the dynamic coalition, and it would be in line of strengthening an outcome-oriented uh, IGF. We made uh, the comparison with the work in the IETF, the Internet Engineering Task Force, where any working group starts with a bird of a feather, but there's always a feedback then to the mainstream, to the Internet Architecture Board, and no standards gets adopted unless it is tested by the broader community. So this is essentially the proposal in a nutshell. I'm not saying that every dynamic coalition that we have should be given a slot when we have this kind of wrap-up session, but only those who produce some intercessional work with an outcome from this work, and that this intercessional work should be promoted uh, in the IGF context to make sure that everybody is aware that it is taking place so that nobody would come to this final wrap-up session with a surprise. They would be given the opportunity to make any views on a proposal that is being elaborated, make that in the intercessional work and would also be possible to address it in the separate meeting of the dynamic coalition when the substantive outcome paper they may have produced will be discussed. So this in a nutshell would be the proposal and I think I would be very happy with this 90 minute uh, slot reserved for dynamic coalition and go back to the dynamic coalitions and explain it to them. I don't know whether any of the dynamic coalitions present in the room would like to add how they see it. I know there are some people involved with uh, work on network neutrality. I think Marilia has been involved there, but there's also Andrea Sachs I have referred to on the dynamic coalition on accessibility. There may be others, but as I said, uh, many of these dynamic coalitions do uh, very serious uh, intercessional work, but they don't benefit from an interaction with the mainstream, and here the proposal is to link them closer to the main proceedings of the IGF. Thank you. So, thank you, Marcus, for, for this uh, very clear explanation. I, I think uh, I would not ask uh, dynamic coalitions to speak. I would rather ask my members to speak. Uh, and if there are any um, doubts, then uh, dynamic coalitions may uh, come in and, and join. The uh, question is, can we support a proposal? And I understand we have reserved 90 minutes in the, uh, the main session for dynamic coalitions. I'll be first, then Giacomo, then Marilyn. Thank you. I'll be speaking. And I guess I'm speaking both as a MAG member and as someone who's been active in a dynamic coalition for a long time. Until just this year, I was chair of the uh, Internet of Things Dynamic Coalition for multiple years. And I think something like this would be good. We do work all year long. We get a meeting and then we go on continuing the work outside. So I think the ability to have this thing, the ability to have this sort of continuity is good and in fact have been talking to the chair of the IoT Dynamic Coalition and he's been very psyched by what he's seen happening uh, with, he's the one that's been going to, to Marcus's sessions, not me. And so I support it both as a MAG member and as a long-time Dynamic Coalition participant. So thank, thank you. Giacomo? Yeah, I, I will do... Um, endorse what uh, Marcus says, um, adding some other elements. I think that there is a, a little bit of frustration in those 
that uh, participate to the Arabic coalition that uh, don't find um, attention and recognition uh, on, on the IGF overall, uh, because the, this kind of specific work that uh, is intersessional by essence and definition uh, is below the radars. So it happens that some of the coalitions are, for the moment are more active and more uh, fruitful received and listened in the WSIS than at the IGF, and I think that this is a pity. Uh, the, this is the coalition, for instance, on uh, uh, on child online protection. There is the the coalition on uh, on uh, um, uh, on the. Uh, uh, on the climate change and others that uh, have been uh, found very hard to find the recognition within the IGF. So this initiative is very welcomed and I hope that this could uh, be able to re-establish fruitful links. So thank you. Uh, I think Marilyn also, also will support it uh, very briefly. Actually, I'm going to raise um, some questions very briefly, Chair. Thank you. We established dynamic coalitions because we needed a place for like-minded uh, groups to work together. I support the idea of a 90-minute session, but I want to note that, in my view, uh, we as the MAG and as the IGF do not have the standing or authority to authenticate or approve or validate um, um, proposals that are undertaken at a dynamic coalition. So I'm cautious about what what is it we are, uh, we, we need to be careful about the brand we have and what the limitations of our brand are. But I do think it's very useful to um, have the 90-minute session, but I think we also need to remember, and you can tell this by looking at the membership of the dynamic coalitions, this is really, and this is a good thing, this is really typically like-minded um, or uh, groups that are interested in a particular topic doing deeper work. Um, and I don't want to make them into something they're not while also recognizing them. But I have this caution about not assuming that we are putting any kind of approval. Um, the final thing I will say is we went through this a little bit with the national and regional IGFs, and they, the coordinators worked together to develop some uh, standards in order to um, be listed on the, um, on the website as a national or regional IGF. There are activities that take place at a national and regional level who don't meet that threshold. We have similar light standards for the dynamic coalitions, and that allows them to use the space and gather, and I want to protect that as well. Thank you. We're not participant. Uh, we have uh, uh, two. What, the first one is, uh, is, is Malcolm. Jeremy Malcolm. Please, Jeremy. Hello, am I coming through? Yes, we hear you. Please go ahead. Uh, so I agree with a large part of what Marcus said. Um, the reason why the dynamic coalitions had fizzled out is that they weren't empowered. And, and uh, the endorsement of their outputs by the IGF as a plenary body um, is, is a way of overcoming that. It's been a lost opportunity so far. And um, I support the idea of a main session. Um, I just Jeremy, we That's lost exactly you. what this main session would be for, uh, but in turn, the main session also needs to be... You've lost me? Uh, yeah, could you repeat the, the previous uh, three or four sentences? Hello? Yes, you're getting through now. I think that the main session also needs to be empowered. I think the main session also needs to be empowered in the way that it uh, um, considers the outputs of the dynamic coalitions. And I think just having a main session leader who says, do we approve this and having information is not uh, adequate at all. Um, we've seen other sessions where the outputs of workshops or um, dynamic coalitions have been presented um, in that fashion, and it's been uh, very lacking. Um, people have not attended that main session. Um, I think we need a much more uh, deliberative process to consider these outputs. Um, 
for the next IGF, uh, if the deliberative poll process goes ahead, that's one attempt at putting a deliberative process into place, and that's an experiment uh, for the future. But for now, I'm thinking of something lighter weight for endorsing the outputs of the dynamic coalitions. Um, there is an idea race project, which you can find online at idearatingsheets.org. I think that would be a very suitable way to get a more tangible and, and considered response from the plenary group to the dynamic coalition's outputs, um, rather than just having a session leader saying, do we endorse this? It actually requires a bit more thought to go in, and it gives a much more, um, uh, a, a much better idea of how well a proposal has been uh, received. So I can uh, really encourage everyone to look at this idea rating sheets um, Thank you. Uh, model and consider that for this session. Also, Thank you. Thank you, uh, I think maybe if there were two main sessions. Uh, with a break in between, that would even be better than one. So thank you, Malcolm. I, I think if we agree on, in principle, then modalities uh, will be considered by uh, uh, coordinators of, of that of that session. So thank you for your contribution. Uh, and so, Subi, please very briefly, because we need to continue on yes, the topic. It, it is a brief comment. Uh, she supports the idea, but it shouldn't just be a reporting in session. Um, we will need structure and key framework, otherwise this can get confusing. Uh, complete support for a main session. Agree with the comment uh, of MAG not being a validating body for dynamic coalitions. Uh, so thank you very much, Subi. I, I think uh, Marcos will take uh, everything into account and uh, uh, hoping or relying on uh, Marcos' experience, I have no doubts that session will be very successful and will be well thought through. And uh, uh, Juan Alfonso is in a good agreement with us. Thank you, Chairman. I, I take this opportunity to ask a question. I'm fr please excuse, excuse me because I'm new here. I don't know if you already discussed this last year, but Two years ago, the working group for the improvement of the IGF mentioned uh, as one of the recommendations they need to have outcomes in some way. And uh, so I am, this in part relates uh, to, to that. Uh, I certainly agree with, with, uh, with Marilyn that the outcomes is not of the MAG, it's of the IGF. So MAG has no uh, mandate to endorse or to, in, in any case, the, the outcome. But the question that I'm asking you is, it's already this has been discussed in the MAG, how outcomes are going to get out either of main sessions or workshops. If, if it's not the case, I don't think we have time to do it now, if we will have to do it maybe in the virtual and all this process. Maybe that will be a good topic for the next, next presential uh, meeting. But my real question is, it's already some discussion been carried about uh, that? Because that needs a process. That needs a very, it's not easy in my way uh, to, to really comply with that request of the working group for, in, for improvement of IGF. Juan Alfonso, this, this uh, has been discussed uh, immediately after working group uh, released recommendations and actually it has been implemented already or everything we do is taking into account these recommendations. Uh, the uh, best practice uh, work stream, uh, intercessional work stream, all that is done uh, with that in mind. So we're working on implementation of these recommendations. If there are no, no opposition to proposal, we accept uh, in principle. We have reserved 90 minutes in main session for dynamic coalitions. And Marcus, uh, we're happy that you volunteered to coordinate preparation for that. And if you need uh, any help, since we will have two coordinators for per main session, uh, please indicate whom you would like to have as a co-facilitator, and we will formally appoint him. So now let us move to next item, and that is interregional dialogue. I suspect that that will be Marilyn who will be introducing the topic. If, uh, yes, Chair, if we're going to talk about the interregional dialogue of the national and regional IGFs, yes, if we're going to, yes, okay. Um, for a number of years, the national and regional IGFs have met in a interregional 
slash national dialogue. It typically is a, um, a three-hour session. It is not a main session. It is self-designed by the representatives from the national and regional IGFs. There are some who are here today, including Mark Buell from Canada. Uh, I had spoken with Anna as well. What we typically do is put a call out with the help of the Secretariat to the coordinators. We do an online planning and identify what we want to do. I will just note that two years ago we did uh, many studies of the national and regional IGFs that several participated in and we shared the results of those studies. We often also talk about um, the commonality of issues, but it is designed from a bottom-up perspective uh, by the coordinators themselves. We've had varying successes. In some cases, we get um, very high turnout. One of the challenges I would just mention that everybody needs to understand is that the national and regional coordinators very often are engaged separately in workshops and maybe even in plenary sessions. They do not have a lot of time to take on organizing. Um, and the people who participate in the national and regional IGFs, many of them do not come to the IGF itself because it is the national issues that most attract them or there's limited funding for them to come. Um, so I propose that those of us who are interested in it put this dialogue together again, invite the coordinators to identify uh, themes and activities. Let me say one other thing. There is a, um, a hoped for uh, uh, opportunity for reflection from the national and regional IGFs into the main session that show and others are coordinating on uh, IGF at 10. And I think also there will be a reflection of participation from the national and regionals from those who choose to work in um, uh, connecting the next billion. So there will be multiple ways in which we are linking with the national and regional IGFs. But uh, my proposal is that we maintain this non-plenary slot, whatever else we do, uh, which is uh, need, needs a large room and needs resources and scheduling at a time when people can participate. So, thank you, Susan. Hi. Um, thanks, Marilyn, for that. I remember the studies that were done two years ago and um, the work that, uh, especially of Sylvia Cadena, in collecting those studies. And it was indeed um, nice to see those all together in one place. Um, my question will be, since I know the, the um, national and re regional IGF uh, email list has been in a bit of a lull lately. Um, I'm just, I guess I'm just concerned about um, participation and also duplication. And I was wondering if you wouldn't mind explaining how um, this could add or complement um, to the IGF Master Chef initiative, um, which also showcases different experiences of national and regional IGFs, uh, just to ensure that the two wouldn't be duplicative. I'm probably, I can tell you what I know about that workshop. Uh, I was invited to participate in it, but I was not involved in any way in designing it. Um, it was designed by um, uh, others from the national um, IGF initiative. So I think the question about what their intention is, although I am invited to speak on it, to actually support. I'm a sous chef, I see. Um, but uh, I can't really elaborate on that, Susan, because I wasn't involved in helping to design it. Um, the national and regional uh, dialogues are typically driven by the coordinators. That is, they are uh, designed by consensus. And again, um, it's an opportunity in some cases the coordinators choose to spend a good amount of time sharing their experiences and their challenges. In other cases, they choose to focus on issues. So it really, it, until we um, poll them, I think it's premature to um, uh, forecast what they will want to focus on. On the issue of the list, um, I spoke with Chiang Atai, the secretariat, who is going to assign a um, um, 
I'm not going to in any way say a substitute for, for uh, Serena, who we greatly miss, but someone from the Secretariat to help to reach out to the coordinators and revitalize the list. The coordinators, for those of you who are on it, really don't use the list because they are busy working. It is merely a form of communication, but the idea would be to send an email to them and invite them to participate in a WebEx call and brainstorm. And maybe we might also hear from Mark about his thoughts as well, since he is also a coordinator. So my question is, do we have any problem with this? Is any reason why we're discussing this? This has been on the agenda many, many years subsequently. I went last year, I remember, and, and then spoke. We have room allocation. This was confirmed by, by host country. Do we need to spend more time taking into account that we have two outstanding issues to discuss? It, I, I see no reason. If it's not an, it's, we're not discussing it as a main session, we should just no, let it's go on. Let's let it go the on. main session. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, God bless this meeting, and uh, three uh, big room for three hours will be allocated. Let us move to main sessions now. Uh, Yanis. Yes, no, we're stopping this discussion. Main sessions. Uh, Chengitai distributed the uh, proposal um, on, on main sessions, and uh, Subi, if, if I'm not mistaken, uh, was the one who circulated also a list of uh, uh, proposed uh, themes for thematic main sessions. Uh, if uh, let me let me see if uh, anyone has any uh, uh, considerable opposition to the uh, proposed outline of main sessions. That means we start with uh, uh, setting the scene, then we go uh, two hours, maybe more, on uh, IGF at 10. In the afternoon of the first day, we have closing ceremony, uh, sorry, opening ceremony, op opening uh, session. And the, the reason why it was moved back is because uh, of technical convenience. If we expect, and we do expect uh, dignitaries, they would not be able to arrive in the morning, but to the afternoon session. So then we would reserve uh, the whole second day uh, for WSS plus 10 uh, consultations. And if consultations will not take place, then we would liberate uh, one uh, after, uh, afternoon or morning session fully, three hours, and we could add additional thematic session to that. So and then we would have uh, a, a thematic session on uh, third day in the morning. We would devote uh, th afternoon of the third day for uh, best practice and intercessional uh, billion. And on the uh, fourth day, we would have a thematic 90-minute thematic session in, in the in the morning. Uh, so we, we would have dynamic coalitions in the morning. Then we would have. Uh, two 90-minute uh, sessions uh, for, for um, uh, uh, thematic discussions, and then we would have a closing session, which would be combined with open mic. We would start with open mic and combine with a closing ceremony. Fiona, please. Yes, thank you very much, Janice. Um, maybe just a question for clarification to help at least me understand what would be the difference between the morning session on WSIS Plus 10 and the afternoon proposed session if um, the uh, UNGA folks were able to come. And in that regard, would this be a consultation on just the IGF component of WSIS Plus 10 or all the action lines and everything else? So just an understanding of what's expected in the morning versus the afternoon, assuming the afternoon happens. We, we had this conversation this, this morning here, and maybe Marilyn, you, you can explain. We're, we're looking at three different scenarios, and uh, so Marilyn, maybe you can explain those. Thank you, and I just want to um, tell everyone that I have a, little e have a little sheet of paper here, and if you didn't get to come this morning, although I did post to the list that people had uh, other commitments, do sign up. Changatai is going to create a special um, email list, for, and I will be posting a summary. Um, 
what we talked about this morning with a, a really good um, a representative group are exploring three scenarios. One would be that the PGA comes, in which case it would be a, a real consultation with the PGA chairing the consultation. We will have the zero draft document, which we can take co uh, comments on. We will also have other inputs that have been made to the um, uh, co-facilitators that will are uh, going to be on a public website that we would also be able to make comments on. Um, in order, if we have uh, the uh, attendance and participation that we expect at the, um, at the Brazilian IGF, I would envision the three hours being taken up with se um, um, specific topics that comments are taken on sequentially so that we work through something organized and then we would have both a transcript, rapporteurs, and a report which would be given to the PGA. It is up to them to decide what they do. The modalities do not specify what they would do. If they do not come, there are two other scenarios. One is there's somebody who comes as an observer and basically we are conducting a pretty much the same kind of consultation, but we are conducting it for only three hours. We have also the question to determine of would we include um, um, short representation of presenters from those UN organizations who have submitted uh, documents into the, the um, consultation process. That would be CSTD, that would be UNESCO, and that would be ITU from the MPP platform. Those would be very short in, uh, and offer an opportunity for the uh, participants to comment on. In all cases, we expect to have a document which documents what is said. Not that we vote on it, not that we negotiate it, but it is the um, uh, proceedings of the meeting. Um, so, and as I said, we're working on three scenarios that we'll, we will, uh, after the um, um, appointment of the co-facilitators and at the first meeting of the stakeholders in New York, which right now we think is either the 30th of June or the 1st of July, we'll know at the end of the week, um, we would then plan to issue a formal invitation to the PGA's office to come and um, engage in a consultation. Remember the PGA will change in September and it will be Denmark. It is uh, Uganda now. So thank you, Marilyn. Uh, Avery? Thank you, Avery speaking. Um, you asked, does anyone object to this? I, I haven't gotten all the way to, to be finding it objectionable, but I do not understand why we're investing a whole day in WISIS plus 10 at, at the IGF. Uh, also, while I'm speaking, uh, on the questions of the th thematic sessions, are we talking about two topics or four topics? But, uh, so that's another question. But I really do not understand a whole day of main sessions invested on, on WISIS, so perhaps somebody can explain to me why IGF is doing that. Thank you. The UN, UN uh, General Assembly resolution suggests that the uh, uh, President of General Assembly uh, should consult uh, other stakeholder groups on WISIS plus 10 review. And uh, uh, if that will be done in New York, uh, there will be maybe 20, 30 representatives of different stakeholder groups, those who are permanently uh, accredited to UN, and they would be providing uh, guidance to uh, President of General Assembly on this is plus 10. If that is acceptable, then we don't need to bring or invite a PGA to uh, uh, Brazil. If we think that uh, potentially consulting uh, with uh, 2,000 representatives of different stakeholders, uh, stakeholder groups in one place during six hours, uh, would be useful, so then we reserve those six hours and invite uh, PGA to consider. If uh, PGA says no, then we liberate those and, and organize something else, or leave them completely empty, because uh, we also discussed that we may wish to leave some main sessions simply empty. 
allowing particip broader participation in uh, workshops. So that is the logic behind it. We will know more in June, and uh, it will not be uh, too late uh, to revert uh, and, and then make decisions how use this time otherwise. If PGA is not coming, then uh, it is up to us to decide whether this is plus 10 uh, uh, event or main session that we agreed yesterday uh, in unanimity uh, should be conducted in, uh, no, not yesterday, day before yesterday, should be conducted in uh, 90 minutes or in three hours. So that is entirely in our, in our hands. So that's the logic. Uh, Elizabeth and then Fiona again. Thank you, Chair. Um, just in the interest of time, I'll be as brief as possible. Uh, two points about the schedule that's been put up there. I, I would s express one concern with putting um, the IJF plus 10 session ahead of the opening ceremony. I think um, it, it would be much better to do that within the um, framework of the, of, of, of the later schedule. And one of the proposals I have uh, for that is perhaps that session could be the morning, uh, the following morning, and the WSIS plus 10 uh, consultation could actually be split on a con the possibility that it might be a six-hour session could actually be split over two days. And th th there are two reasons for that. One is obviously that if there is a, a section of time that is used uh, because the PGA and the consultation will not take place, that would fit quite nicely probably in sequence with the IGF review. And secondly, if it is a consultation for these people, perhaps in consideration for them, spreading it out over the two days might be more effective for our communication. So thank, thank you. Uh, the, one of the arguments why uh, this is, uh, IGF at 10 is uh, scheduled early is uh, dignitaries and ministers could attend it, uh, and they would not attend it on uh, second, third day. That is our experience. Fiona, please. Yes, thank you, Yanis, for the further explanation on the previous point, and for Marilyn for providing the further details as to the three possible options that are on the table. Um, it would be helpful to get the paper circulated um, and to see that so we could react appropriately. Um, I, I think from, from my perspective, and I appreciate that people are appointed to the MAG in their individual capacity, but for a government official, you cannot divorce that from your actual, that you work for an administration. And from the perspective of my administration, I think it's very difficult for us to get out in front of the modalities of a UN process that have yet to be developed. So I need to put that on the record, but we'd like to see the proposals and we could come back to it. But I think the initial conversation did cause some concern amongst folks in the back row here. So thank you. Thank you, Virat. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If our concern about the opening ceremony is that it would not have enough senior level people if it's held in the morning, then I suppose IGF at 10 will meet the same fate. Uh, and therefore, to put it in the morning would probably lose us the exact same people that we are missing because we are moving the opening ceremony up. So I'm not sure how that works out. So that's one question we might, please. Uh, we're we're, we're talk talking on uh, very, very important people who may come in the afternoon, fly in and her hopter and then fly out. I, I will not specify who they may be, but uh, there, there was a reason why, why it was specifically requested uh, to, to be put in the afternoon in order to maximize chance that very, very important people would, would come in the afternoon. Okay. So if that is the case, then I understand. But I would still, uh, I think we should keep a placeholder on day two in case as it develops. And I think the idea that uh, ICC basically just put forward, which is, is it possible to split? Um, into two days, if the PGA does come in, um, into um, on our request, and I suppose they will stay overnight, and we might want to take a break between the six hours of consultation. In which case, this could be held in day two. But I just wanted to leave some flexibility there. Let's not get to all those decisions today. Uh, and if it is, you know, if it's three hours, then we should relook at some of these things. But right now, we'll leave it at that. So I get the clarification that this is for those two or three people that you're talking, not a dozen because if if they're not coming in the morning for the opening then you know there's no point having no, this session. We're talking Thanks. about very very important people. Thank you. And then certainly there, there isn't any 
uh, anything is carbon stone, anything. Everything is flexible and we do not know. Maybe, maybe second day will be uh, completely empty. So then we, are, uh, we can move around every, everything uh, easily. Uh, can we move to, to the uh, discussion of themes, if, if that's possible? Mark, please. Well, thank you. Very, very briefly, uh, you know, for ministers, if, the, if there's a high-level event to which ministers are invited on the uh, day zero afternoon, then in the m next morning, an IGF uh, um, session involving ministers, and then the opening ceremony. Those three elements is a great uh, program for ministers. Thank you. One clarification: Please. Have we held? Uh, have we? I, I I can't remember from memory. Have we held sort of events that are held before, like a main session? Bef Thank you. Yes, the, uh, the last last uh, uh, IGF opening also was in the afternoon. The question was: Is there a main session held before the opening? The, I didn't. I can't recall one, but I'm sure there is. That's yeah, fine. That's fine. Uh, always has been uh, orientation session and, and main yeah. session, and, and then setting the scene session. Okay. Always has been the case. Uh, Constance, please. Yes, thank you very much. I think this is a this is a promising draft. Um, I wonder if there's any value uh, at the beginning of the week to reflect any of the IGF outputs because the program of work we're preparing for the VVIPs is uh, focused on WISIS and, and IGF issues, so institutional internet governance issues, and they will not have a chance to um, get a sense of the actual outputs of IGF 2015. Um, so I wonder if there's any value in including in the beginning of the week any kind of information session um, on intersessional activities. Uh, the, other, the other question I have is whether or not we should rename the main session intersessional as it doesn't seem to be very clear in terms of terminology. Maybe IGF best practices and policy options for connecting the next billion. Thank you. Uh, the answer to the first question, that might be uh, raised in, in the setting the scene uh, session or hour. And uh, uh, on titles, everything is possible. That's up, entirely up to us. This is just a placeholder for the moment. On, on, on themes, uh, can, we, can we get on the, on the screen a list of proposed themes? thinking the technology allows copy-paste. Um, but thank you for typing. So who is willing, willing to make the first pitch? Fiona. No? Sorry. I thought that you uh, Hassan, please. Well, um, once again, uh, regarding the theme for sustainable development and the internet economy, and taking into consideration uh, Mike Nelson comments, so there are two uh, suggested titles, how internet economy uh, is vital for sustainable development, and this is the suggestion of uh, Mark, and uh, or ICT driving in, uh, um, sustainable development. So thank you very much. I, I think it would be uh, not wise uh, now discuss potential uh, titles. Uh, we will, let's let's agree on broad sort of topics that we want to want to address in thematic sessions, and then based on that broad agreement, uh, work on on concrete uh, uh, titles for for the thematic sessions. Uh, any f any further. Um, any further uh, thoughts? Jack, please. 
Um, apologies for adding to the list, but I think considering the large amount of proposals that's coming around the thematic area of human rights, um, that that should be considered as a main session. And also, the, the I guess the importance and, and timeliness of the topic of privacy for this year with the um, with the appointment of the Special Rapporteur on privacy, the mandate, and I think that's actually a very key issue for discussion at the Internet Governance Forum as well. So thank, thank you. I would, of course, would be much uh, um, a happier uh, hearing yes. trimming the tree, not uh, putting, uh, uh, putting things on the tree. Uh, but uh, I would like also to ask my members to express their support to one or another themes which is uh, which are pr present on the list that we see the majority uh, in the room. I will take Susan first and then Virat. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to clarify, and I don't want there to be any misunderstanding about um, my support for regional and national IGFs because I think they're all great and I support them very much, but it seems that I thought they were in a main session. It seems that they're included as a main session. Um, by the no, that was, that was proposed uh, as, as a main session topic, but we equally know that there is a, a coordination meeting a uh, three-hour session for regional and national IGFs. Okay. Um, in that case, okay. Um, I would like to support and explain a little bit um, why I believe that network neutrality should be a main session. Um, if we take the proposals submitted by the internet community as any sort of barometer or indication of what the general internet community um, is caring about and is interested in about. We see that there are, um, I think, in total eight proposals that dealt with zero rating, um, two of which I think were accepted, at least. Um, there are other proposals dealing with zero rating that were not accepted. Um, zero rating is a sub-issue of net neutrality. Um, so I think given the interest and given that the beauty of the IGF is that um, government officials and policymakers can um, come to the event and understand the different solutions that are, are being proposed or um, discussed in other jurisdictions. I think it's a really valuable opportunity um, <clears throat> for people to come together to discuss this issue over the course of the event. Um, I understand that network neutrality was uh, a main session last year. I don't think that's a reason to automatically preclude it from being a main session this year. Um, I also think that there have been many developments that have been happening on this topic um, since last year. And we're also seeing a broadening of <coughs> kind of the tripartite classification of net neutrality actors. We're seeing involvement of CDNs. We're seeing involvement of tier one ISPs and, and transit providers. I don't think this is an issue that's going to go away. I think everybody could benefit from a discussion on it. And, and so that is why I would propose that we have a main session on network neutrality. Thank you. So thank you, Susan. Brett. Mr. Chairman, we have space for how many? Finally, two will go through at best. How many of these will go through? So on the previous slide, we have for, for, mo for a moment three. Uh, three thematic uh, sessions reserved, and if uh, WSIS plus 10 will uh, uh, fall through as planned, then we will have fourth. But not necessarily we need to fill every, every, every slot. So I want to remind myself and ourselves about the conversation we have every time we start the new MAG session in February, this time in December, where people vehemently oppose the need for main sessions and long main sessions and so many main sessions. And now we are back to sort of filling out every square inch that's left. So I would uh, sincerely request that we should stop at one or two at best because um, we, we sort of, if we tend to forget what we do between four months of meeting last time, then next time the same subjects will come up, and, and I'm reminded of the Swiss cheese. So my request would be to actually keep it at uh, one or two maximum and leave some space. Um, last year, as you're aware, net neutrality came in 
at the end of May, because it was in the outcome statement of Net Mundial, and therefore it sort of came up as a new subject. And that might happen this year. We are quite, quite, quite some time away. I would request that we certainly look at sustainable development. Um, this was a, the, this is the main theme. It is linked to a lot of work that's going on in Geneva, in New York. Uh, this is the year that we're looking for a renewal. So let's keep in mind our key objective is the renewal of IGF, is to engage the governments, is to give them the comfort that we are discussing their language, their issues, their concerns. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I realize net neutrality is an, is an issue that's grown since we met last time. But you know, this sustainable development has universal appeal across continents, across nations, across uh, uh, regions. So would certainly uh, strongly support sustainable development. Um, I'd also uh, think that we might uh, look at, uh, we, we, I, we don't quite understand right now what Net Mundial would be, so maybe the host would explain what, what it would constitute since there is other, other, other opportunities for Net Mundial, but I would certainly, um, you know, uh, from the ones that are listed, internet economy, given the fact that uh, it's a t t over a trillion dollars invested in the sector, there's a lot of livelihood jobs. Um, people who love it and who, and who hate it all want to be involved in the economy. Uh, I might make the minority at this stage, but I think internet economy is a sensible subject to get new perspectives, new people in, and it's a large enough subject. Banking, mobile, payments, all of that stuff that we discussed, we didn't find homes in workshops. A ton of that stuff can find homes here. It's not something that's been done before. Uh, we'll have a chance once, once, in, once in a year. So I would ask sustainable development and internet economy. Thank you. So thank you, Dominique. I have a question, and then I want to speak in support of uh, several of these topics. So I still count five thematic sessions if the WISIS plus 10 doesn't, doesn't happen, if the UNGA, is that right? You said three? Sorry. Yeah, no, uh, it depends how you count. Okay. You know, it, it, the counting is not a science, it's, a, it's an art. So you can count them in different ways. If you count 90 minutes, then you have more. If you count three hours, you have less. Okay. Uh, for the moment, let's assume that we have three and, and okay. see how far we can get with that. Okay. All right, just double checking on that. So I would support um, Vera and others on the sustainable development and the internet economy, mostly because sustainable development is actually a theme. But I would just like to say that we had a very lively and, and, and really good discussion um, and good debate last year on net neutrality. However, what we're seeing at the GSMA across the globe is net neutrality is not really an issue in developing countries as much as access is an issue. And so I think sustainable development and, and internet economy would feed into that. And, and really, you know, target the governments as well, who are looking at regulatory approaches for access and for getting many, many of the governments, have obviously, in, the, in developing countries as well as developed countries, for getting people online. So, so that's just my two cents. Thank you very much. So, thank, thank you, uh, Juan Alfonso. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, my, my intervention is along the lines of the previous one. I think that we should not fill all the, the holes now because many things can emerge or even in some cases it, it's good to leave it empty so people can go to the to their workshops. Having said that, I think that we should only commit now to the more general, that the one that we're really sure. I think that the balance is um, leaning towards sustainable development and internet economy. And the rest, leave it in standby, just in case if it becomes news or hot items in, in, that, in, in that moment. And in that case, I would like to add to the list cybersecurity. If we have done it this last year with all this uh, uh, Sony attack and all that, cybersecurity was a, a hot topic in that moment. Maybe it could be a hot topic again. Cybersecurity as a concept is wider, that it has many facets, that it could easily be one of the hot topics of the moment. So what I would recommend is, as my previous uh, colleagues said, just to fill uh, sustainable development and internet economy and leave the rest open, just uh, waiting to see what happens in the rest of the year. We're just beginning in this road. 
So thank you, thank you very much. Thank you for helping me from one side and adding complexity to another. Uh, Marilyn, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, well, I'm going to speak uh, only in support of a sustainable development and internet economy. I do think that possibly the two could be merged. I sound better in French. Um, that uh, I want to. I want to get clarification of whether we are proposing this as two separate main sessions or a merge session. That's my first comment. No, I, I think that that would be one. My second comment is um, I would propose to take um, if, if I, I, I don't really, I'd like to hear more from the host about Net Mundial, but I'd like to also propose a possible option, and that is um, a large room for up to two hours on Net Mundial that would be uh, maybe a able to hold 150 to 200 people if it's not, um, I'm not personally of the view that it should take one of our uh, plenary slots, but I want to respect the interest of the host to, um, engage further in a discussion about the Net Mundial uh, outcome documents. So thank you, uh, 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 Thank you, Yannis. Uh, just to reinforce the arguments uh, for uh, having a main session on Net Mundial outcomes. Uh, after 18 months of the Net Mundial event, it should be a time to, to take stock of the, the, this outcome. How is the internet governance community going regarding the principles that we uh, approved in the document and uh, about the roadmap, the various items? And I remember you that, in fact, if we take many of those proposals for main sessions, if you consider the role of governments, uh, human rights, cybersecurity, net neutrality, uh, those all those themes are included in the outcome document of Net Mundial, so that uh, by having this main session, we can address all those issues and see how are we doing with those issues in the ecosystem, which uh, for uh, which organizations are uh, tackling those issues, how they are doing this, what else should we do? So I think it's a good opportunity not only to take stock of the document of the Net Mundial uh, document, but of the, in, the whole internet governance ecosystem, because this is what uh, the Net Mundial is about. It's about the ecosystem. Thank you. Uh, I have many requests for the floor. Please uh, keep 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 up, and, and uh, I will call on you. Don't worry, I see everything. Uh, Fiona is next. Yes, thank you very much, Janice. Um, a couple of questions and then maybe a suggestion at the end. Um, so it's unclear to me, and it's very difficult just looking at the titles to know exactly what the session would be about exactly, because there's not a description. So we're sitting in here reacting to just headlines or titles. But um, it's unclear to me what sustainable development is and how that would be different from a conversation about the WSIS plus 10. If the WSIS plus 10 itself is about the development goals and meeting the, the goals from WSIS and things like that, I'm, I'm not quite sure what the difference between the two would be, so some clarification would be helpful. As I understand it, we have a main session on the IGF at 10 and then this new idea of a consultation, but the WSIS plus 10 conversation, as far as I understand, is still supposed to be about the broader document itself and things like that. So I'm not sure how that's different. Um, but I also have the suggestions. I'm not, just not sure the utility of us sitting in here um, presupposing what we think people that are going to come to Brazil might want to talk about or might want to hear about. So perhaps there's a way to take these topics, flesh them out with a sentence or two, and put them out for public comment in terms of what would people actually like the sessions to be. And maybe we could take that approach in terms of deciding what the one or two are that people want to move going forward. So uh, let, let me do two comments on, on your proposal. So first, first is um, the MAG is uh, tasked by uh, Secretary General uh, based on community proposals to work on a program uh, for IGF. It's a, it's a program committee. And this is up to us to, uh, based on our best understanding what our communities would like to see propose a, uh, 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 agenda. 
if we would go down back to consult, that would prolong uh, things, and, and I, I would say we would put our problem on others' other shoulders. So that's that's why I, I would like us to, as we did before, uh, suggest and, and work on uh, main sessions uh, as uh, based on our sort of uh, in, um, uh, knowledge what our constituencies would like. Second, second is uh, this is plus ten. As Marilyn described, uh, the conversation would be based very much on the outcome, or rather, rather the um, draft of December meeting document, which by November would be already constituted, and that would be an opportunity to input uh, to discuss that that document in a multi-stakeholder environment because otherwise that would be discussed exclusively in intergovernmental setting. Uh, and I, since the overarching theme is uh, sustainable, uh, how internet governance uh, supports sustainable development, so that would be also one, one of the uh, main sessions talk, talking about uh, technology for sustainable development or internet for sustainable development. Fiona. Yes, I'm sorry to come back because your, your uh, attempt to help me understand things has actually confused a little bit more in my mind. So I understood the proposal as Marilyn described it, and again, seeing this when it circulated would be helpful, is that the draft zero conversation would be in the afternoon if the UNGA folks were there. I wasn't quite sure what the morning conversation was, if there's a difference. So seeing this in writing would be helpful and could help clarify some of this. And I do appreciate the responsibility of the MAG to set the agenda, um, but I don't understand the harm in actually taking a few weeks to ask for stakeholder input on topics, but we'll defer to your judgment and what you prefer, how you prefer to operate. Thank you. Aida? So just to express my strong support for both human rights and sustainable development, uh, I believe that both are very critical. Human rights grounds the internet governance and rights framework, and it had also strong support through a number of proposals. And uh, yeah, sustainable development is very key for developing context. Thank you. So thank, thank you, uh, Ginger. Uh, okay, let Ginger speak first, and then uh, perhaps I could read a short note from Sobi. Okay, the audio, this is Ginger, um, the audio is uh, breaking up, so I hope you can hear me well. Yes, I would like to note that I do have several points to make because uh, Subi as well has been waiting in the queue. Um, I, I realize that since you can't see our agitation and that we're jumping up and down in our seats that we really need to speak. Um, perhaps you need to have us on camera. Um, Going back a little bit, I liked Marilyn's proposal that Net Mundial Initiative be given a side slot. Yes, Net Mundial Initiative ideas and principles are important, and they are very similar to internet gov uh, the IGF's proposals. But what I suggest is that, for instance, net neutrality, which is such an important topic, including internet.org, which is, makes it a critical issue for developing countries, we should d discuss net neutrality and we should ask Net, uh, net Mundial Initiative to include their input on all of these themes when we bring them up rather than emphasizing Net Mundial meetings. We should use their, their principles and their ideas and interventions in every one of the, the uh, topics because they're important principles and important thematic input. Um, but especially since, for instance, we have a very, very important main session that cannot, that, uh, if we go back to Juan's suggestion, for instance, that we leave several open, the in most indispensable main session, and we can't forget how long we worked to get this, and how hard we worked, and that I, I'm sure you must all understand, I'm talking about a human rights main session. We have to have a, a, a the human rights main session, and I, I would like to see that put on as irrevocable as our first session, as it, it is covers all of the principles, all of the norms, all of the reasons we're even talking about internet governance. So I would like to see that we get that one taking a slot, and then if we need to later uh, leave some flexibility, but if we're going to, for instance, 
follow principles and rules as Juan Fernandez has, has suggested, human rights is the one indispensable what main session we need to have. Thank you. So thank you very much. Now comments from Subi. Yeah, short comment from Subi. Uh, she said, a uh, strong proposal for cyber encryption, uh, building digital trust in uh, governing the deep and dark net. Our key objective is to do a good program, which has more value, most value for each participant. As Meg, let us not forget renewal is important, but if we do good work, that should also be a reflection on why IGF needs to be renewed. Uh, I have heard the word renewal over the last three days. This is important, but this uh, uh, can't be the only reason why we are doing IGF with support for sustainable development. Thank you. Uh, Ephraim? Hello, this is Ephraim Kinento for the record. So uh, I just wanted to, to reiterate uh, about Dominique's comment about net neutrality uh, not being important. Last year during the main session, I was I spoke about zero rating, and uh, I would still insist that uh, let's find a way of discussing this, even if it's possible by inviting Mark Zuckerberg to the meeting that will attract lots of people and have a debate about this this issue. And uh, I would support uh, inclusion of human rights. So net neutrality and human rights are the two main sessions that I would really support to deal with because it affects the developing countries. Uh, my internet is zero rated. Uh, I use Facebook zero and Twitter zero. And there, there's a number of implications on that. And I still insist on that. Thank you. So thank you, Sita. Uh, I have two points. Thank you. Uh, I'm supporting the regional and national IGF, but I do think this could also be reflected as the outcome for the IGF at 10. So this could be part of the IGF at 10. And also would like to uh, second or highlight what Ginger and FM said about human rights. Thank you. So thank you. Uh, Segun. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm just being curious um, concerning the human rights issues. For me, I think the topic is being flawed unnecessarily. When you consider where, uh, when you consider African and other developing country, um, my position is that. Uh, Sustainable development and internet economy remain the attraction for the stakeholder from the developing countries. And I really want uh, the MAG to consider that because uh, if I can also share with you the experience we are having concerning uh, human rights uh, issues on the internet. I remember that uh, one of our group at the local level was pushing uh, internet to right freedom. But um, in as much as that position is attractive, the main problem we have now in Africa, and I also want to believe in other part of the continent like Asia, how do we uh, ensure, how do we address, how can we address the issue of accessibility and penetration. So for me, the human right is not really the main problem that we have in Africa. What we have is investment. How can we drive investment in internet infrastructure that can open up internet space? Thank you. So thank you, Sagan. Uh, I will take three further interventions, uh, four. And uh, then I will make a proposal and we suggest to move to the next item. So I have um, uh, Anke, then Sandong, then Avri, and then Benedicto. Anke, please. Retaining sustainable uh, development um, and uh, internet economy, given the jobs and growth agenda, particularly in the developing countries where the youth demographics are literally massive, and local innovation is powering a lot of that, fueling a lot of the growth of that economy, particularly at the e-commerce side, payment sector, etc. If we have, in the interest of preserving optionality, closer to the date, if some other hot issue surfaces, I, I. 
as spoken by previous speakers and interveners, I think we need to preserve that optionality and leave some blank spaces open. Uh, so I, I would I would make a recommendation that we go with that approach in terms of just holding on for the time being. As a third third area which we could potentially consider uh, and looking at um, uh, supporting from this floor would be Net Mundial because that is the host country where we are having this. It germinated out of that um, meeting of uh, that country venue and therefore I think we need, there are some discussions which can, this could be a good home for that. So th thank you. Uh, Hendong. I think it's Shannon speaking. I think compare the human right, I, I, I suggest to, to consider the internet economy uh, seriously. Uh, I think that in developing countries, we uh, do believe that the internet can speed the uh, economy development in a country. So they try to push the internet economy and try to push it in a kind of much other uh, industry. So uh, my su second suggestion is about cybersecurity. Now I think cybersecurity is a very uh, uh, serious topic in, in recent years. And now there's a lot of debate on the cybersecurity issues. So I think it's for the IGF is uh, better for, for us to have a platform for dialogue on cybersecurity issues. Especially there's a lot of uh, argument between some countries. And my third suggestion is about Netman deal. I think, uh, sure, I, I, I know that in the end of June, that we should have a Netman deal meeting. So I don't know what will be happening in Netman deal. But I think Netman deal tried to be another platform for the government's discussion and maybe find some kind of solution and uh, for the problem. So, so I, I think we also need to have some session to uh, connect more information about Nanmen Deal and uh, have people to discuss Nanmen Deal in IGF. Thank you. So thank you very much, uh, Avery. Thank you, Avery speaking. Uh, first thing I wanted to do is actually endorse uh, Fiona's idea that we basically come out of this meeting and take a month and, and collect some more opinions in addition to our own. But beyond that, I, I support the continuation of human rights as an issue that there, there's a whole lot of aspects of that we haven't gotten to yet. And then when I look at the other one, I was really I found the appeal to taking on the topic of the internet org, whether it was the net neutrality aspects or the internet economy aspects or the development aspects and, and such, because it's become such a focal point of discussion for so many of the issues we're dealing with in governance this day. It is so topical. It is a hot issue. And it actually seems to me that it could be deserving of a session where we really dug down into all the FUD and counter FUD. Thank you. Thank you, Benedicta. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Yanis. Well, I'd like to offer a few comments because I think part of the difficulty we have in tackling this is because we uh, there was we lack uh, conceptual documents in regard to what is intended to be discussed under each title. Uh, differently from what we have when we are considering the workshops, we knew exactly what was intended, who would be speaking. So here we are talking about more of a concept and trying to, in the course of, of the debate, trying to feed in some, some details to, to assist us in the decision. And another point that is lacking is a uh, clear understanding on how this relates, each of those proposed topics relate. To, to those decisions that have already been made in regard to the framework. How, because some of those issues are kind of overarching issues and under which there are uh, workshops, open forums, things that are taking place. I think it would be useful to have a better understanding how this would fit. Uh, 
But having said that, uh, in regard to the Net Mundial, which is the one uh, we are proposing as host country, uh, first of all, it is very important to differentiate that the proposal is to have a main session on the Net Mundial outcomes, not on the Net Mundial initiative. So we are looking at as two different things. It's important not to make a confusion. And as my colleague was explaining, uh, the idea would be to focus on principles and the roadmap, the two main aspects of the outcome. And in regard to the roadmap, the principles, of course, is something that uh, is, uh, has, does not have a dynamic, but the roadmap was uh, action-oriented document. Uh, it was like a picture we took in April, April 2014 on some things that were needed in order to advance. So we think it would be, it, make, it would make a lot of sense uh, one year and a half later to take stock of how we have moved forward in, in those regards. And as my colleague said, that would entail discussion on a number of issues that are also there. So Net Mundial would also provide, let's say, a very comprehensive framework to discuss uh, issues. Uh, maybe the difficulty would be to select which issues to be discussed there, uh, because Net Mundial addressed uh, uh, basically all the, the issues that are there. And another important point is that Net Mundial also has provided some very important insights in regard to process to the how the even the multi stakeholder model can work in practice and this would also be may be important for IGF to further reflect on, on this and this is also this also relates to other workshops that are being proposed. So uh, I would not of course uh, speak against any of the other main sessions but I'd like to highlight those aspects that uh, uh, directly refer to the Net Mundial proposal. We think that would make total sense that uh, we would be consistent to, with what we had done before to take stock and to try to. And I think this would even assist us in providing input for this WISIS plus 10 uh, overall review that will take place at the UNGA because this would provide a very uh, comprehensive uh, assessment of, an uh, overall assessment of the situation, as my colleague said, the, 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 it was look, would look from the perspective of ecosystem and not even much important as particular aspects are, we would have a very uh, comprehensive appraisal of the issues. Thank you. So thank you. Um, time is running, and we still have one question to discuss. And I would like to uh, suggest the following. As uh, Fiona said, and I we supported maybe uh, proponents of ideas uh, could uh, make uh, a 250 word uh, abstract uh, explaining what a session would try to achieve, what would be angle, and uh, in next 10 days, and provide that to Secretariat. Secretariat would put together a compilation and uh, uh, based on that, uh, we would decide in one of the next uh, MAG uh, meetings. Uh, if that is acceptable, or rather, is there any opposition to that? I will not take in any, any other comments on this. Simply, we need another, another decide another question. So I don't hear opposition. It is decided. Let us move to the last uh, item of our agenda. It is uh, next steps. Uh, on next steps, opposition. Thank you. Just to um, clarify, I thank you very much and appreciate the proposal. But just to clarify, on the other document that we had on main sessions, the things that were in brackets and the things that were in red, we're going to revisit those. Those aren't set. OK, thank you. Everything will be revisited. Main sessions are not not decided. Uh, way forward. We have to decide whether we need a third meeting, and uh, uh, if we need, whether that should be a formal mag meeting or that should be as uh, uh, there was some some uh, indications that that might be an editorial group meeting in framework of intersessional. Uh, all flags down and, and on this, this topic, way forward. Uh, 
Very brief interventions. Marilyn. Chair, it's um, Marilyn Kate speaking. I support uh, the need for at least a two-day MAG meeting, and I I think we need more than uh, just the editorial group meeting because we have more work to do. Um, I also think that there's a little bit of a problem since in order to get funding, um, parties from developing countries and governments, I think we really need to make it a MAG meeting. We have work to do. Uh, if we could do it in Paris, uh, that would be really great as well. Um, probably two days would suffice. Thank you. Uh, further, further questions, Subi? Um, this is a note from Subi from earlier. Uh, she asked uh, that we set a time frame for a meeting regarding conditionalities that we tied to certain proposals and that they, uh, and, uh, they may be reported into the virtual call whenever it's held next. That is exactly my understanding. Thank you for confirming that, Subi. Uh, any, any comments on the need for the third meeting, Fiona? Yes, thank you very much, Janice. Um, it would be helpful to understand the specific items we think we would cover at a next meeting. I appreciate, given all the intercessional work and the proposals and the drafting group or open-ended group, but that group would need to get together. But it would be helpful to understand the items that might be on the agenda that would require a full MAG meeting, maybe prior to deciding or giving a view. Uh, if I would have answer, I would not ask the question. In my view, we do not need the MAG meeting as MAG meeting. We may need, uh, if, if intercessional work goes ahead as planned, and if we need to edit a document, so then I see uh, the value of meeting in September, early September, uh, to uh, work on, on, that, on that document, uh, having and then the, distribute that document for comments and so on. For the MAG meeting, honestly, we will, we will continue regular MAG meetings online, uh, conference calls. We have outstanding issues, uh, certainly. We, will, uh, we need to decide and prepare main sessions. We need to uh, finalize uh, a workshop uh, uh, decisions on workshops, but that is more technical work uh, now. We need to coach new uh, or, or workshop proponents uh, to make sure that there are quality proposals or quality workshops. But as, as, uh, as MAG on organization, I think uh, after this meeting we're more or less done, except main sessions. That's that's my that's my assessment and that's uh, my question. I understand Jack wants to say something. I think if we were to have a third meeting, um, it would be then quite useful to have the, uh, the meeting to be discussing sort of strategic issues around the IGF, considering that it's the tenth year. Will we be spending so rather than um, the the planning parts for this year's IGF, but to spend some time to talk through maybe. Um, IGF redesign issues, funding issues, renewal issues, those sort of conversations. And then there was also another point um, around if we were to have it in New York, then it would be useful to reach out to government, government representatives um, to then support and attend the IGF. So thank you. New York is not anymore an option. We're, we're, if we decide to have meeting, then it would be in Paris. UNESCO uh, preliminary said that they would uh, host us. Uh, and um, that the, we're looking now at two, three, four, or three, four, uh, if we're looking in two days, uh, September. Virat, please. Mr. Chairman, first, uh, if a MAG meeting is to be held, it will discuss substantially the uh, main sessions. In the May meeting of Paris last year, which was the last meeting before the September IGF, detailed presentations were made by all the co-facilitators on the main sessions. This year, I'm, uh, it's my guess that the main sessions are more complicated, are more involved and require more, more attention to detail. And therefore, if you had a MAG meeting, one of the main purposes would be that. And for that, I think September would be the right time. However, if the editors wish to meet, uh, they might want to consider not meeting in September because September is only three months away. I'm not sure what kind of progress they would have made. They should actually consider October if it's not a non-MAG meeting with only editors. So those are my two points with regards to MAG meeting, the main issues, and 
if the editors want to make the initial to reconsider the dates of September. Uh, thank you, uh, Hassan. Thank you, sir. I uh, second the vote on this. In fact, it's a very good opportunity for us to have uh, enough time prior to the IGF to prepare well for the main session, especially that, as said, it will be, uh, we need to make a good impact. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Where? Uh, thank you. Uh, I'd like to support the point made by uh, Jack earlier on adding on that, if that meeting is held to add onto that agenda. Um, strategic discussion about the future of the uh, IGF and uh, perhaps some internal discussions about the MAB, MAG itself and some of our processes. It seems that, uh, judging by just from uh, since joining the MAG, that uh, that never, uh, unless we plan it in advance, it will never happen. And I'm afraid that the December meeting after the IGF uh, is again going to focus on uh, stock taking of the event itself, and that would be a lost opportunity. So I'd strongly support that. And if that uh, goes through, uh, if it's acceptable to the MAG, I would also suggest that we have a preparatory process so that we have something to discuss. That's n that it's not just on the day that we come to these issues, but actually prepare some uh, points before. Thank you. Thank you. Aida? Ephraim? Uh, Juan Alfonso? Thank you, Chairman. I would like to add to what Leah said of the themes that I would like to be discussed. The, the one that I said before, maybe because I knew, but I, I still feel that the way of getting outcomes from the IGF, no, I'm not talking about the best forum, I'm not talking about intercessional, I'm talking about the IGF itself, the yearly. I think that we need to get deep on that, get some process. You know that's one of the sticking points of, of, of on, on the criticism of IGF in order to its usefulness. I know that we don't want to have a negotiated document, but I, I think we have to have something. But for me, it's not clear how we get to that something. I think that's, that's something that we need to discuss either in person or in, through the uh, conference call. Because at least for, for me, I don't have clear how we can have outcomes from the IGF itself. So thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I'm frankly uncertain as to whether or not we needed a two-day mag building on um, Fiona's point without having some concrete agenda items in front of us. Um, perhaps we could actually put that together over the mail list and take that determine. I know it needs to be decided quite quickly, but uh, you know, honestly, I'm struggling here to have an opinion on that. I wanted also, if I may, while I have the, um, the floor, it's just Constance asked me before she left if I would remind everybody that the updated draft on the intercessional proposal went out. If everybody could take a look at that over the next um, two to three days, um, that would allow us to launch um, the initiative next Monday. So thank you. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I, I see that there is no, no really uh, good uh, convergence of views uh, and doubt remains. Uh, we, when, when we looked and, and did back, backward counting in order to be able to consult community on uh, intercessional document, uh, we thought that there would be need for uh, several kind of uh, iterations of consultations, and, and that's why September uh, would be appropriate for the drafting of the first uh, uh, first document or draft, first draft uh, that would be put uh, on for public comments, getting back, redrafting. Uh, re-editing and putting putting a final version before going to IGF. Uh, October certainly would be late, and we would not be able to do two rounds of consultations, only one. Uh, 
uh, that that is only reason why it was proposed in September. Um, but again, uh, we do not know how many uh, national regional IGFs will contribute, and uh, if there will not be sufficient number, then most probably we need to accept that there is a, a failure of experiment. If there is sufficient number, then we can go on with editing and proposing a document and continuing this experiment. So we, we really need, need to, to gather information and see how many. Uh, for the moment, I know there are three or four. I hope that there will be a dozen, because only a dozen for me would make sense. Uh, so th therefore, um, we, need, we need to see how things evolve. Uh, I am not in a position to make you a proposal, uh, except proposal that we need to continue reflection and um, postpone decision until uh, one of the next uh, meetings we will have over phone. In the meantime, we would keep uh, UNESCO uh, uh, kind uh, agreement to host uh, eventually meeting in Paris. 2, 3, 4 September, which is Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or uh, 4, 5, which is Thursday, Friday, depending on our uh, future decisions. Uh, and we will decide that on, on later stage. Would that be acceptable? Thank you. I, um, with this, we have exhausted the agenda of this meeting. And uh, we're three minutes ahead of schedule which is a good result. So uh, I would like to thank all of you uh, for uh, a very uh, thorough and passionate work. It was uh, extremely easy for, for, for me to uh, chair meetings, uh, uh, all, all these, these sessions, and we achieved a majority of the results that we uh, wanted to achieve. I also uh, would like to thank our scribes and would like to thank interpreters uh, who helped us, though we used only one language, but uh, I think uh, there were also francophone in the room who listened uh, also in French, and uh, remote participants also may have used uh, French. Um, that said, uh, I also noted that there might be further reflection needed on our working methods. Uh, what I would like uh, to say is that methodology of evaluation helped us enormously. And uh, for that, uh, Susan, uh, Fiona, and others who worked on that methodology, I think that uh, you deserve uh, our gratitude uh, uh, for your uh, re really uh, hard work and, and, and good outcome. Whether we need to uh, continue in this way next time or we need to define a new methodology, not in, uh, not in evaluation, but in, in um, engineering of IGF, that, that is maybe something we need to discuss. Historically, we have uh, been working uh, with this bottom-up approach where open call was uh, put forward and uh, then we selected uh, uh, proposals out of those uh, who suggested. Of course, there is another, another way, or maybe several ways, how uh, to organize a meeting, uh, which would be s maybe perceived more as a, as a uh, top-down, uh, but that would provide much more uh, maybe a, a st structured approach uh, and would be uh, more focused on, on uncertain desired outcomes than this open approach. I have no opinion, and uh, I'm look, looking forward to a discussion about that. I understand that Fiona had, has some ideas that uh, she would like to uh, present at one point, uh, whether, whether in writing or uh, in one of the next meetings. Uh, but in the meantime, we have done majority of our work. We have selected uh, workshops. I believe that this is a good choice. I think we have uh, explanation uh, for reasoning why we discriminated some, uh, why we put some up uh, uh, on the agenda, uh, which were scored lower. 
uh, and uh, I think uh, community uh, will uh, understand that, uh, will understand us, will understand our reasoning. So once again, thank you very much for your work uh, and safe return back to your home countries. For those who are staying in, in Geneva, good weekend, the weather will be perfect. Uh, on Sunday, uh, the, uh, there is an open curve uh, in Geneva, so please walk around, walk in those wineries uh, here, get drink for free, but uh, remember abuse of alcohol is a bad thing, so please enjoy your weekend here with those who are staying on for VISIS Forum. So thank you very much, meeting stands adjourned. And, and of course, as always, I forgot all those who worked in preparing this meeting, Chengitai and the team. I think the team also deserves round of applause. Thank you very much.